This is a story about a boy named Jesse who lives with his family in the countryside. He likes to draw and has been training all summer to be the fastest runner in school. The Burke family moves in next door. Their daughter, Leslie, is creative, smart, and becomes Jesse's classmate. When the big day of the race arrives at school, however, Jesse gets beaten by Leslie. At first, no one likes Leslie, but because they are neighbors, Jesse and Leslie become friends. The two of them begin to form a real friendship around an imaginary land they call Terabithia. By swinging across the creek on a rope swing, they enter a world where they are king and queen and go on numerous adventures. It starts to rain, making it unsafe to travel across the creek, but they continue to travel to Terabithia anyway. Jesse is invited to go to a museum with his music teacher that he likes and he has a great time. However, when he returns, he discovers that Leslie has died in the creek. As Jesse is shocked by all of this, Leslie's family moves away and Jesse uses some of their extra lumber to build a bridge across the creek so that no one will ever fall again. Despite portraying the power of imagination and the innocence of childhood, this is not really a children's book as it touches upon various adult related themes and challenges many of the social conventions established in society. First of all, it displays unusual relationships that children may not understand. Of course, by that fact alone, it doesn't make the book false or bad, just, shall we say, unique. For example, the relationship between Jesse and the music teacher is strange. Jesse is attracted to the teacher, and it seems that the teacher is attracted to Jesse, at least the way the story is written. Maybe that's just how a boy his age would think, but still, this can confuse a child. And while Jesse is at the age where opposite sex attraction is normal, it does make readers wonder why he isn't infatuated with Leslie, a girl his own age, if that was the character trait that the author wanted to highlight. Another unusual relationship is between Leslie and her parents. They insist that she call them by their first names, and they don't seem to be parents in the conventional definition as much as they are her peers. These unusual relationships challenge the reader's view on what real-world relationships are like. Perhaps the author wanted to let children know that they aren't the only ones who experience or see these types of relationships. This story also talks about spirituality, both in the religious aspect and the more secular one. Leslie goes to Easter service with Jesse's family and after asks about God. And while her questions are not provoking, they do tear at paradoxes surrounding the Christian faith, like God's wrath and how a loving God could also damn his children to hell. And of course, there's death. One of the main characters in the story dies. How is a child supposed to react to this? I mean, really, how do children react to the death of someone they know? There doesn't seem to be a real answer presented to us from the author, but maybe the lack of an answer through Jesse's struggles to come to understand his situation is relatable enough for children. Any of these adult topics fly over the heads of children, but nevertheless, they're still there. We have adult child romantic relationships, child abuse, sibling abuse, religion, sexual curiosity, and unconventional parenting, all wrapped up within a story about a kid who likes to draw. Oh, and his best friend dies.